Milk is typically the first thing you taste in life. American families have been nurtured by it for generations. These days, there are all kinds of milk. Goat's milk, soy milk, rice milk. But for a long time, there was just one product in nearly every household refrigerator. Fresh cow's milk. Thompson's Dairy was one of the first to pasteurize milk. You might think it happened out on a rural farm in the Midwest. A place like Wisconsin, Iowa, or Oklahoma. But not Thompson's Dairy. Nope, Thompson's Dairy was in Washington, D.C. The nation's capital was the birthplace of a wholesome, long-standing, but ultimately troubled institution. Back in 1881, farmer John S. Thompson started producing milk. The production was out in the suburbs. But Thompson found himself having a hard time finding a distributor to get the fruits of his labor in the hands and mouths of customers. So, what did he do? Like most business owners set on getting ahead, he started making the deliveries himself. Well, not all by himself. Thompson started with a horse and wagon. It was a reliable mode of transportation at the time, but it did have its challenges. You see, the horse was partially blind. In the beginning, Thompson started off delivering 10 gallons of milk a day. That may not sound like much today, but demand picked up quickly and the dairy production and distribution expanded. Thompson opened up a processing plant. <laughs> the carriages would line up outside every morning to get loaded with the day's deliveries. That worked for a while, but like all things, the milk industry evolved. The horses and carriages were retired, and before long, Thompson's Dairy had 200 delivery trucks and 500 employees. The company was growing, but it still remained an independent family business. Then, in 1898, just 17 years after he started his milk production business, John S. Thompson died. An accident involving a runaway horse killed him. Thompson's three sisters stepped up to run the dairy. In 1917, his nephew began working there. Eventually, he took over and he became the dairy's president. Thompson's Dairy had 50,000 homes and businesses throughout the Washington, D.C. area receiving their products almost every day. The White House was even on the delivery route. Business was going so well, it was time to move into a new, larger facility. In 1927, 45 years after that one-man, one-horse milk delivery operation started, Thompson's took over an entire city block. The new location was prime real estate in the heart of Washington, D.C.'s entertainment district. Summertime. The U Street Corridor, a strip that became known as Black Broadway, anchored by the Lincoln Theater, where Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, and Duke Ellington all performed. The theater is still there today, and right next door, another D.C. institution, Ben's Chili Bowl. Virginia Ali is the owner. Well, it was a business, and it was on 11th Street, so it was kind of going up. Yo! The area was jiving with excitement at night, but during the day, it was all business. A busy street, a bank at the corner, and Thompson's Dairy. We did. We could get milk there. And then we could just go in and buy it, too. The plan had the most modern equipment. A pasteurizing room, machines that filled and capped the milk. Thompson's bottles would separate the cream from the milk so it could be easily poured out. Every classic milk bottle was inspected before heading out for delivery. In the 1950s, three quarts of milk cost 72 cents. Thompson's customers had a lot of other items to choose from too. Cottage cheese, butter, sour cream, and yogurt were produced at the plant. There was an order form to fill out and make requests. Thompson's even used a tried-and-true marketing strategy to connect with customers. A newsletter. Back before TV commercials, smartphone apps, and other new media, there was the monthly moo. Here, customers got the chance to get to know their delivery men, other employees, and even see pictures from the company Christmas party. Thompson's had come a long way from the initial 10 gallons a day. 
At its peak, Thompson's Dairy delivered 27,000 gallons of milk daily. Metal boxes left on the front stoop would house the milk and other items if no one was home to collect in person. Yeah, I just got married. Had my first child. Charlie Hudgens was in his 20s in the late 1960s, starting his family and starting his career with his first job delivering milk. My wife would complain about the smell of the milk when they got home. She can still smell the milk on the, on the uniform. Hudgens enjoyed making the deliveries. But, as told in folklore, there was one hazard to the job that could ruin a milkman's day. We used to carry the metal crates, you know, to put the products in to carry them up to the house. We were told that was a dual-purpose crate. You warded off dogs and animals because they just didn't like milkmen coming in their yard. So I was taught early, you use the crate as protection against any animals that are coming at you. So I always, you know, carried my milk crate up to the door, put my milk in the box and everything like that. And for some reason that one day I went into this yard knowing there was a dog and just completely slipped my mind. Without my crate, I was just carrying the bottles. Well, I made about two steps up the front stoop there and here comes the dog after me. He pushed me up against the storm door and I broke both bottles of milk on the on the the stoop steps there. Scared the living heck out of me. I think I scared the dog too because all the milk and everything went flying. The dogs were one obstacle, but believe it or not, the cows could also get into trouble. <coughs> Charlie Hudgens recalls a fateful day where he not only had to drop off the milk, but then he had to go right back to pick it up. I got a call from my supervisor out on the route and he says, you've got to go back to all your customers that you delivered to today and pick the milk back up. I said, what? What are you talking about? He says one of the, the uh, farms that supplied milk to Thompson's Dairy, the cows had got out of a certain field and got into a field of garlic uh, grass, onion grass, that's what it was, onion grass. And the onion grass had permeated into their milk and when they, you opened the top of the milk, it smelled like onions. So I said, well, are you kidding me? He says, no. He said, you got to go back to every one of your customers and pick the milk up and leave a note, explain to them what happened. And I said, you, that didn't take me, it took me all day to deliver it. I got to go back and pick it up now and write notes. But that's, that's what we had in. Thompson's Dairy had a long, successful run. Competition from grocery stores was starting to take its toll. Charlie Hudgens says he could tell things were changing when he started selling unusual products. Christmas candy and tablecloths. I mean, this was all, in, you had to include that with your dairy delivery, you know, knock on the door and say, you know, buy this for me because I'm your friendly milkman, you know, and it was nothing related to milk. Then, in the 1950s, the reputation of the once wholesome milk supplier started to spoil. Thompson's began getting bad press. It seemed that every time the labor contract came up for negotiation, there was tension with the workers' union. All the guys that I was working with were all like, why? You know, why are we doing this? We're going to lose our jobs. You knew in the back of your mind, you know, there was something going on. In 1955, benefits were contentious, but a strike was averted. Then, more than a decade later, in 1969, the dairy disputes were again in the headlines. Finally, two years later, the union negotiations hit the boiling point. This time, dairy workers weren't willing to budge. Some even walked off the job. Home deliveries stopped. It was only a matter of time. June 9, 1971. After 90 years in business, Thompson's Dairy closed. Virginia Ali says the sudden shutdown left some people wondering how to get milk. I remember hearing that the, their dairy was closing and everybody was like, what do you want? And I don't think we were that automated at that time where you could just find a neighborhood store and go buy a bottle of milk. Thompson's Dairy was a victim of the changing times. The cost of milk was going up and competition was moving in. But the union's reluctance to bend on demand for substantial pay increases was ultimately the breaking point. Charlie Hudgens wasn't delivering milk by then, but he still remembers the shock when he heard the dairy was done. 
was just like, really, they closed? How can they do that? Just with all the, the employees and trucks and, you know, all the farms and everything that were dependent on them, you know, just gone just like that.